What's up, my friends? NFL Week 1. I'm going to build some lineups and some stacks right here, right now. No time to delay. It's time to get paid. Let's go. All right, I've got my DraftKings lineup builder right here, and I'm going to over to TeamRiserFall.com, looking at our stacks tool. And I have selected a stack type of a quarterback plus one plus one. What this means is I am trying to create the best three-player stack that I can. Now, when I am looking at this board, it allows me to see the best value, the best rating, the best projection, the projection rank, the rating rank, the value rank, and one of them pops off the board and it's not even close to me. And even though it isn't the highest projected stack right here with Murray Hopkins and A.J. Brown, it is the second best rated stack. We have player ratings for all players. And it's also the best value on the board. That is Aaron Rodgers, Devontae Adams, and Marquez Callaway. So I'm going over here on DraftKings. I'm going to put this one together real quick. So I've got Rodgers. I've got Devontae Adams, and we're going to type in Callaway, make it quick. And he is all the way down here at 3.4K, number one wide receiver for Jameis Winston. Now, secondary correlation is extremely important to me. Now, I was looking at our projections earlier, and I was trying to figure out where I wanted to go with my secondary correlation. And I was looking at the positions. And one player that stood out to me, and I'm going to go ahead and type his name out instead of sorting through everything, is Devonta Smith. And when I bring up Devonta, let me type them correctly. When I bring up Devonta Smith, I can see his price is just 4.5K. I don't mind his ownership this week at 1.5% per, uh, ownership projection and the value of 2.45. Not too bad at all. We've got a couple metrics we like to use here. And I really, really like where Devonta Smith is sitting. The other one I liked on the other side of, actually, I'll just bring it up on DraftKings. I'll show you here. The other one I really liked on the other side of the ball was in the same game, of course, because we want secondary correlation. So I'm adding Devonta Smith is another rookie, another high profile rookie here at 4.4K, and that's Kyle Pitts. I am allowing myself to get, you know, capture the upside of this game without using Jalen Hurts and without using Matt Ryan by using two players opposing them in the same game. So Devonta Smith versus Kyle Pitts, and I've got a Rodgers, Adams, and Callaway stack. This gives me enough correlation where I think that I can have upside to win a tournament without all my eggs in one game stack. Now, for you players who really are not into using secondary correlation, no problem. No problem whatsoever. I'm going to be looking at a larger stack now. So I'm going to be looking at a four-player game stack. I click quarterback plus two plus an opponent. This allows me to choose the best stacks for the main slate. By the way, let me filter out the main slate with my internet here, I'm going to click on one o'clock and 425. There we go. So I've got the main slate stacks included only now. All right. So now I'm going to look and I am looking for a lineup that pops off and it, it looks like it's right here. It's Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore, and AJ Brown. It's the sixth best ranked. It's the eighth best rating and the fourth best value kind of all up there high across all of them. Another one here would have been Josh Allen, Stefan Diggs, Beasley, and Chase Claypool. And uh, I'm going to roll out this one first, and we'll take a peek and see what a four-player game stack looks like. So I'm rolling out Kyler Murray. I have myself DeAndre Hopkins, Rondell Moore, all the way down there at 3K this week, an absolute steal, as we are probably going to see him running 75% of the snaps or more in week one. Going to be running out of the slot. They're manufacturing touches for him this preseason. I love me some Rondell Moore. All right, so the last thing I want to show you here after I showed you a couple of the top stacks from our tool is some of the values because we all need value to get through our lineup building, yeah? So I'm sorting our NFL study hub here and I am going to sort by value after I filter the main slate and I'm specifically looking for value at the wide receiver position. So let me slide over to wide receiver, in fact, and I'm going to sort the value score and here's a bunch of phenomenal options i'm going to blow it up here a little bit just in case you're watching on cell phone so that you know you get a nice view of what i'm looking at here right so when i'm sorting by the value score man oh man is it a who's who of phenomenal upside picks here Marvin Jones, Marquez Calloway, Rondell Moore, Elijah Moore, Terrace Marshall, 
T. Higgins, Michael Pittman, Jalen Waddle, Devontae Adams finds himself as a top value, even though he's 8.3K. What does that say about him? Jamar Chase slides in there. Not too sure how much you want to use him in week one. A.J. Brown sneaks his way in there as well. Paris Campbell, LaVisca Chenault. You know, you got Gabe Davis, Tyler Boyd, Jerry Judy. My point is, when you guys are building your lineups this weekend, do not get hung up about necessarily uh, having the perfect value option. There's a lot of value on the board. I think trying to just whittle it down to the perfect option based on the construct of the lineup you're making is a very small tournament. Well, then my friends, if you're in a less than 100 person tournament, a guy like Marquez Callaway is a fantastic option. I don't care if his ownership is going to be near, you know, 10 to 12%. He's okay to plug in there in a small, less than 100 person tournament. If we are talking about a, you know, you're maybe you're throwing a dart into the Millie maker. Well then fam, don't be using him. Go with the top value on the entire slate here who ends up being Marvin Jones at 3.5. His ownership is a 3.4% and he's, you know, look at this Marcus Catholic, 11 and a half percent Marvin Jones at 3.4%. He's a similar price tag. So you've got a nice price point pivot. You can plug in Marvin Jones and you're able to build a lineup where you're still having high upside in your stack. But then you're doing a price point pivot to a lower owned player. You can honestly do this at every position, still end up with fantastic picks. It doesn't need to be a bunch of dart throws in your lineup in week one. There's zero reason for those. There's so many great picks on the slate. Again, I'm going to sort the tight ends here. And, you know, when I'm looking at my tight ends, look, Kyle Pitts, 8.8%. Highest owned tight end at 4.4K. We'll look at Noah Fant, 1.5%. His value is not too far off. His projections only two less than Kyle Pitts. So you could go with a price point pivot with Noah Fant in here over Kyle Pitts and have a little bit lower owned tight end. So on and so forth. You guys can build out the rest of your lineups and you still don't have to be on a bunch of you know terrible dart throws and really, you know, oh, just got to fit the low owned player in there. Ah. You really don't. You can still pick players who have tremendous upside, who have a similar probability of hitting that upside, and you don't have to have, you know, a Hail Mary pick, okay? So build to the contest you're entering. Be smart about your correlation you're putting together. And if you want to check out our tools and our content, and then if you need help, we have cores, core picks, player pools that we give away, and multiple private premium streams and videos for all things you know, showdown and main slate, uh, use promo code NFL 50. It'll give you 50% off your first month, which makes us just $15. And by the way, if you are someone who's wanted to use fancy cruncher or already a fancy cruncher user, we give you $20 to use on FC every single month. So do the math, use promo code NFL 50. And what happens? You end up paying 15 bucks to us. You get $20 to FC. It's like I gave you $5 to try us out for a month. I'll see you on the inside, my friends hit that like button on the way out. Thank you for supporting us. And I hopefully we'll see you on Sunday morning for our 9 a.m. to 12 noon Sunday morning NFL show. Take care, my friends.